developing story, we go to Bogota to speak with Joseph Humeyer, the executive director of a Center for a Free Society. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, Joel, you know, this is fascinating. One headline on this I found, I think, kind of sums things up. Argentina, a dead lawyer, a missing spy, and a president under fire. This story seems more like a best-selling mystery novel or a movie, but this is real life. Your thoughts on the twists and turns of this story? Well, you know, you said it correctly. I mean, this really is like a murder mystery novel uh, more than real life. Unfortunately, it is real life. Um, you know, I've followed Iran's activities and influence in Latin America for more than five years, and I tell you, a lot of the things that they're doing uh, have to do kind of with that, that twist that turns the mystery-like situations. I mean, you remember not too long ago in 2011, there was a, a, a plot that was uncovered of an Iranian-American in Texas that was going to assassinate the Saudi ambassador in Washington, D.C. That itself sounded like a, like kind of a movie tale. Uh, according to, the, uh, now back to the actual case of Dr. Nisman, I mean, this is the logical next step. It's the correct next step, because one thing, the fact that he, he, the, the prosecutor is now dead doesn't mean that his work is dead. His work has to continue on, and obviously that he presented a case before the judiciary. That case needs to be heard against the Argentine president. So I have to look at this like the correct and logical next step to, uh, to the circumstances in Argentina. Joseph, let me just throw out some of the various uh, statements that are coming out uh, as a result of this latest development. An opposition party official said this, it's not normal for a country to have its vice president indicted and a request for the president to be charged. Uh, your thoughts on that comment? Well, you know, unfortunately, Argentina does a lot of things that aren't normal. Uh, the way they manage the press or, 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 or try to control the press isn't normal. Uh, the way they manage their economy is definitely not normal. And that's actually taking an effect right now. I mean, Argentina is also on the verge of a big, big economic crisis this year. Now they're going to be facing a political crisis. This is the, you know, the, the worth of both situations for the Argentine government. Uh, I, I agree. This is not normal. But uh, unfortunately, in Argentina, the, this is becoming more the norm with the president, uh, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner. Uh, Joseph, that's, that's one perspective, uh, but a cabinet official calls all of this an active strategy of destabilization. So you see the different various points of view emanating from Argentina. Well, correct. I think to one degree, uh, the environment in Argentina has become very polarized and very political. And that's what I don't like about what's going on with the death of the, the prosecutor. I think a lot of individuals in Argentina that are on the opposition might be making it more of a, as a political weapon against the president, when in reality what we should be focused on is the work that the prosecutor was doing, the work on the AMIA case, the work on uh, Iran in general in the region, and the work that he did on uncovering a criminal conspiracy to, to whitewash the Iranians from one of the worst terrorist attacks in the Western Hemisphere. The work itself should be the focus, uh, not necessarily the political uh, ramifications. And Joseph, one final question. Uh, in Joel's report, uh, one of the people said 21 years have gone by and no one's in jail. What about this search for justice? Uh, how, how much is that resonating in that country? Well, you know, one of the things that a myth that needs to be cleared up is that the Omni case is unsolved. It's completely solved. There is a 700-page indictment that names nine Iranian uh, individuals many of which are high-level or used to be high-level officials in the country. Uh, the problem is that uh, because this is an international case, uh, the way the Interpol works is they can only provide custody to, so that they can see justice if the Iranian government surrenders their accused. In, the case, in this case, the Iranian government is not willing to do that, and that's why you had this gridlock. Uh, the AMIA case in itself has been a tragic history of, uh, of Argentina. It's been a black mark on the Jewish community all throughout Latin America, and it's been, like I said, it's one of the largest terrorist attacks in the Western Hemisphere before 9-11, Islamic terrorist attacks in the Western Hemisphere before 9-11, and, and unfortunately it's uh, never been indicted or n never actually seen justice. Joseph Humeyer joining us from Bogota. Thanks so much.